You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. <laughs> Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. We're not gonna neg him. No. Um, let's be modest but thoughtful because okay. we already know... He has a big ego. He could be toned down a bit. Yeah, but we're. this is us being modest but thoughtful. No, I, I know. We, we don't need him. We can model good behavior. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex, but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery, it was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Pico Bear. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena. This is a good little art piece. Where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Uh, wait, a, wait a second. Oh no. We have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything except... Maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Where's Gordon Ramsay when you need him? Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe sprinkles will bring out an impression. Okay. <laughs> Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with puppets. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. <laughs> hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. Me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Aw, sure, Pico Bear. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. Eep. Boop. Oh my. Wait. Oh my. Two potential partners? I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Definitely. Um, who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Clink seems more qualified. I agree. I agree. <laughs> uh, sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clink today. It's okay, I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clink is clearly excited to have some <laughs> attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Warp, warp, warp. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clink might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Bzzz. Tissue? I hardly know you. Ha 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 ha. Clink jutters and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide it up, or divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sandals? Can I that? Kerner? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Sanders. Okay. Steak tartare. Mm, octopus. Uh, grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Mm, I wonder which one KFC wants me to, to pick. Interesting. <laughs> oh, he liked that. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes? <gasps> and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Oh. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. 
Making perfect produce is a passion of mine. Uh -huh. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business, and you'd better keep your fingers off of my man. Mm. Did someone call for me? Ah, uh, no cheese, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Pico Bear screen, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh. Oh, howdy there, Ashley, Van Van. <laughs> Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Hmm. Actually, no. It looks like Pico Bear is struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was gonna say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up on my level. Ha! Ah, doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing <laughs> that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we can't complimentary shadows? We fit each. Well, we fit together, like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Uh -oh. Ashley, it, Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders' hunk of hunks in your time of need. Obviously, we gotta go for Colonel. Are you sure? Oh, Oop. clicked it already. I'm here to learn and to express myself via my cuisine, not bigger with prima donnas. Partners, were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements, from contracts to handshakes. I took on Pico Vera as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Uh, based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Pico Bear's natural talent or the loyalty. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud of all potential. When you look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that, in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on idle pilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift the heaping sporkful up. You see Ashley with a sinister look. You know she's plotting against you, you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van, do something! Wait, do something, do something! <laughs> Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes, realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he sinks, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on, right there, people there. So wait, this is the perfect Gordon Ramsay opportunity. Okay. 
Well done. Right there. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you brew one more spoonful, you both be better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have... Oh, can I have potatoes, please? Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. <laughs> Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty, braised tentacles of octopus in my silky salt water sauce. Place plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. <laughs> You've ignored from me for too long. That ends now, it is I. You will have the first bite, and you will all look on me with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his smoothie dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite dry. It's. Raw! <laughs> Too late, it has been eaten. Uh-oh. Uh, I think I left something in the oven. Oh, I feel so good. It oh, killed it him! <laughs> oh no! <What>? <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Did he just... Do that on purpose. I think he's just stupid. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, and then is almost immediately back to his oblivious cell. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. The entire <laughs> class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Jack is frozen the whole crowd. They are motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Um, hello! I turned into a ghost over here! Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all this nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please. Let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on! You follow, follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building is taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today? Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them. It reminded me of why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, speak over there. There's something I need to tell you. Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working toward that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also, lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ooh. Hey, no, I... You... Shut up! I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Oh! Forget him! We're talking about me! 
Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. <laughs> That's you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do a silly voice. The Spark Monster! The Spark Monster! Yeah, yeah. Here to fight a hero! <laughs> I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds! How dare you threaten me? Just as I was letting down my guard and connecting to another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me because I'm a monster. See? Is he rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. What? What will you do? <laughs> Let's attack. I don't know why, we're just doing it. Which attack? Cook with love. Nice. Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. That attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. Oh. You take one damage. Try to defend. Let's see what happens. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure. You do you. Spork monster focuses their mashed mind and draws an energy from Mother Earth itself. Uh oh. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Attack them. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Okay, so we pretty much have the same. Yeah. Oh no, two two you damage. Kill a pencil. Oh no. Okay, so I'm learning that we should never defend. Using cheese sauce. <laughs> oh no. A vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens. Pop, pie, power, punch. This is pinch. Pinch. Oh. <laughs> Hot pie, power, pinch does 10 damage. Spork monster is defeated. Nice. You saved me. An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. Oh boy, which one? Um, spare. Uh, yeah. You manage to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he's still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Um, be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. <laughs> I won't forget, wait. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back, like you said. The spork monster scuttles off into the night. I'm gonna regret making the voice later. <laughs> the defeated monster left behind a special item. Ooh. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. What? You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm. Borco? That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any, any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. Oh. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my Colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, <laughs> instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Zzz. Oh. Oh, everybody's there. And the dead student. Mm-hmm.